Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game SO Terrigan Entertaining Series on the Mr. FPJ DE10 Nano Project. What I'm doing is a follow up to last week's video where I showed you that Taki Udon and Retro Remake were talking about an Agile X5 based FPJ development board triple stack that they could seat out to developers that work on Mr. FPJ course for a potential quote unquote Mr. 2. You can call it whatever you want, but it would be a future looking FPJ board where you'd be playing games on it. And of course, that got people excited, and I saw so many different comments. People asked Asking, are you talking about GameCube, PlayStation 2, Xbox? I even saw a couple Pentium 2 cores with 3D effects on board as well, people thinking that that might run. So what we're going to do today is talk about the realities of what an Agile X5 based FPJ board would mean and also kind of clue you into some of the overall specs and things that developers look for when they're trying to determine whether or not a platform would run on any given FPJ chip. Because remember, an FPJ chip does absolutely nothing until a talented individual comes by and writes code for it. You need to make the cores and if you're not really a coder think of it this way i pretty much shoot all of the content on the channel on a black magic 6k open gate cinema camera you can take that thing and make a hollywood movie out of it you'd see in theaters but if you don't know how to use the camera you don't know how to use the tools then you're going to get really nothing out of it whatsoever it is down to the person writing the code to figure out what the limitations and capabilities of the agile x5 are compared to something like a cyclone v so we really don't know 100 of what it can or can't do until we get it into the hands of devs. But we can definitely look at a lot of the specifications of that chipset and make some educated guesses. I'm also going to explain some of the criteria that you would look for to see whether or not a particular platform would or wouldn't run based upon the FPGA chip it's working for. The number one console I did see in the comments and I was not surprised whatsoever was Dreamcast because of course we can't count on Alejandro, the Salvador Dali of scams to actually bring us the Dreamcast FPGA core because we know full well that is not something that is going to happen. But Dreamcast is probably Probably the prime candidate for something like an Agile X5. I'm going to go over the specs in just a little bit with the Hitachi SH4 as well as the Power VR GPU on board. Dreamcast is an absolutely amazing console and in some ways it can definitely beat PlayStation 2 in performance, but I understand that PlayStation 2 is a more technically capable console on paper and we'll get into why you're probably not going to see that on something like an Agile X5 in just a little bit. But something like Dreamcast FPJ Core could be achievable on an Agile X5, but again remember it comes down to somebody wanting to write the core and having both the talent and time. There's a bunch of criteria for things being successful outside of technology, time and talent definitely being one of those. And if we go through some of the briefs on the Agile X5, I read a lot more white papers than I really wanted to for this video. We can kind of start breaking down some of the specs, but first I want to explain to you what we're really looking at when we look at something like an FPJ chip to understand whether or not something would work or not. The first thing is the speed of the console in megahertz, the CPU, the GPU. If you can't run those chips in FPJ at full speed, you're not going to have a very good time. The second thing is there's a lot of RAM timings and the RAM, at least on Mr. FPJ, is shared between multiple functions. And the third most important thing in a way is the logic fitment. You need to have enough logic elements to be able to put everything on the core or else if you can't fit it, then it's not going to be a console. Think about it this way, I'm just making up numbers, this is not any sort of pertinent information. If a GameCube core would take a million logic elements and you only have 650,000, you have a fit issue. Or if you want to water it down even more, it's like a 10 gallons of shit in a 5 gallon bucket problem. It just isn't going to fit no matter how you work at it. And even though Agile X5 does have an improvement on the overall speed of something like the Cyclone 5, that does not mean that this is going to be running stuff like an Xbox anytime soon, because honestly, this chip is just not going to be able to do that and with the overall frame buffer system in place on some consoles FPJ really isn't going to do anything that software emulation couldn't do for those consoles and the work would be much better spent time wise improving software emulation than really bringing something like Xbox to an FPJ chip in the first place. Sure this thing has a lot of different digital signal processor blocks that are improved but again it's just one of those things. We have to remember speed counts. The Nintendo 64 runs at 93.75 megahertz megahertz but remember the turbo core is running at 80 megahertz just because something is clocked up that high does not mean that the system ever utilizes that full clock speed 
Because remember, when you read specs on a CPU and you see your processor runs at 5.4 gigahertz, it might only ever run at that for a few seconds and then clock back down to something more comfortable like 4.8. Specifications are just top end realities. That does not mean that something like the Nintendo 64 is pegging itself at 93.75 megahertz the entire time it's running. It just means that that piece of silicon for the CPU is capable of clocking itself at that speed. It's kind of like your car. It might go 180 miles an hour, but you don't spend every single drive going 180 miles an hour. You obviously use the different speeds depending on what your trip, or in this instance, what the processing of the game would require. And again, at that top end speed, there's a lot of heat to dissipate, so a lot of chips will definitely be clocked down versus their theoretical maximum just to keep the heat envelope in check because this hardware has to run for years and years and years. And just like a car, if you ran it at top speed all day long, probably wouldn't run that long. So if you take a look at the Dreamcast technical specifications, we can kind of see what's going on here. You'll see it is a pretty intensive system, but we have stuff like the CPU operating at 200 megahertz. So that means it's definitely running over twice as fast as the Nintendo 64. And we will go over some of those white papers where they talk about the conceptual limit of something like a megahertz speed as far as Angelix 5 is concerned. But I've seen in the white papers I'm talking about comfortably running a 4K processor on FPGA at 300 megahertz, so at least have that. And the other reality is some of these specs really aren't even published. You might need an NDA agreement to see the full capabilities of something like Agile X5, because a lot of these pieces of hardware do require NDAs to actually use, and the manufacturer does not publish anything. But at least on the CPU side of things, you have 200 megahertz. The same thing on the graphics side with those Power VR2 chips. So we know that if something like Agile X5 is stating in a white paper that it can run something around 300 megahertz, then we could say at least on the fabric speed, we're going to be able to do something like 200 megahertz. So that leaves Dreamcast in the realm of a capability and a possibility on an Agile X5 FPGA board. Does that mean you're going to get enhancements like you see here in Flycast? I do not know, and most developers wouldn't know until they actually sat down and started coding a Dreamcast core and seeing, okay, what's left over on the FPGA when I'm done with the core? It's pretty much every enhancement you see on a Mr. FPGA core that is additional logic element space on the chip that's not being utilized that they say to themselves, I have an idea, let me see if that would work or not. Or if you take a look at something like Naomi 2, this is where even in that same nuclear family of Dreamcast and Naomi, you might not be capable on Agile X5. Because yes, it's going to be running at the same speed, but now all of a sudden, you have a dual CPU setup, new transform and lighting GPUs, rasterizer GPUs. Naomi 2 has basically a lace bag worth of chips on board. And now suddenly, maybe you can't fit all of that RAM requirement in. Maybe you don't have the fitment on the FPJ because you have a bunch more silicon. There's a lot of things to keep Keep in mind when you're coding to something like an FPGA chip and it's not just, hey, it's a bigger number, it might work because logic fitment definitely matters and something like Naomi 2 with all of those chips might just overrun the overall logic element capabilities of the biggest Agile X5 and we don't even know if that's what would end up on the final board. There's Agile X5 chips from 130,000 logic elements up to 650,000 but if you find out that Dreamcast would comfortably fit at 350 and you realize that no other hardware beyond Dreamcast would ever fit even in the 650, there really wouldn't be much of a reason to put on the biggest chip unless you wanted to deal with some more encoding on the 4K side of things and the scale but something like GameCube, that is just going to be outside of the realm of possibility for something like Agile X5. Because if we take a look just basically at the overall CPU speed, even if it is clocked down, at least for the specifications I can find, you're not going to be doing that on Agile X5. Maybe you could get it running and maybe it would look correct, but it might be running at half the frame rate or less. And again, when you incorporate frame buffers, you end up in a situation where software emulation is just a way better usage of your time and energy when you want to play a GameCube game without GameCube hardware. But now something like the Nintendo DS, I only had a 3DS to put on screen, that would definitely be something that could be possible on an Agile X5. Robert or FPJ ZoomSpots has talked about in the past wanting to do a DS core, maybe is even working on one in the background, just poking around that I have no idea, but that's something that wouldn't work on something like the Mr. FPJ Triassic DE10 Nano with that Cyclone 5 chip on it right now, but would probably be possible on something like the Agile X5. 
or something like Cave CV 1000B and 1000D hardware that uses a Hitachi SH3 CPU at 133 MHz with some minimal video hardware on board as well. So something like Death Smiles, you could be playing the arcade version of that on something like an Agilex 5 chip or a theoretical Mr. 2, and you're not going to be able to play that on something like the existing Mr. we have now. So that's kind of where you're keeping your imagination. You want to realize that some boards just aren't going to be possible, whether it's arcade or some consoles. Like I said, Xbox 360, think of the CPU speed on that, then you quickly realize it's just not happening. But there's so many fun arcade boards out there that could be brought over. Like the Midway Zeus here, sure, only has two games, one of them being absolutely famous and loved, and the other one being my favorite, Invasion of the Abductors. And this is something that, again, isn't going to be running on Mr. FPJ, but something like Mortal Kombat 4 and Arcade Core could actually happen. But again, somebody has to want to make it. Are they going to spend the entirety of their time making a Midway Zeus core for two games? But it leaves options like Hyper Neo Geo 64 on the table because that uses a derivative of something like the Nintendo 64 CPU clocked at 100 megahertz, but it has a lot more silicon on board that probably just would not fit in the footprint of the Cyclone 5. So that is something that you might see. And I do love the fact that these things aren't made for gaming whatsoever. They talk about robotics. And on the video game side of things, there's probably only one robot that you would even code into the FPJ. So the point I'm trying to make is none of this hardware is intended specifically to be running any sort of retro game cores. And until developers actually get them in their hands, they're not really going to know what is possible. People need to start poking at them, turning them around in their theoretical hands, writing code to them, and testing things. Like I said, when I buy a brand new cinema camera, I know what it should be doing. But until I do all of my tests, do all of my resolution charts all my color science tests and basically just kind of check the overall exposure latitude. I don't know what the camera does, I just know what it's supposed to do on paper. Because a lot of things are considered impossible until they are possible. Nintendo 64 was always the impossible core for Mr. FPJ, and look where we are now. 100% of the retail library working, it's near to perfect as far as an FPJ recreation of a Nintendo 64 is concerned, but it does have a couple of RAM timing issues that can't be fixed on the Cyclone 5, but could definitely be fixed on something like the Agile X5, but that's the reality of a potential quote-unquote Mr. 2 or whatever you want to call it. It's not going to be an Xbox FPJ core machine, but it could be a lot of things. We just have to wait and find out. Leave me a comment down below and tell me what's the one console you'd love to see on it. I would be curious, but we're done. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.